and I'm really pleased to be back. And um, I just want to give a huge vote of thanks to our incredible producer, John Ivory, who sat in for me last month with William Wonders. It was a great show. I, I watched it. Um, I was recovering from a new hip and at the time was fairly high on dexamethasone. Um, so I'm not sure how good a job I would have done. Uh, John filled in admirably so well that I, um, I would not be embarrassed to ask him to fill in again for us anytime. Uh, thank you, John. Um, tonight, we welcome somebody I've gotten to know fairly well um, through our ANCAN activities because we run a MS support group and um, one of our moderators, she didn't start as a moderator, but she is now, is um, the person I'm going to be talking to tonight. Um, possibly one of San Antonio's most inspiring stories, uh, Hannah Garrison. And um, welcome to Solo Arts Heal, Hannah. Hello. Hi, Rick. Hello. Hello. Good to see it's you so, again, Rick. It's so nice to see you. So <laughs> I have to say a few things about Hannah and also something about this show. This show is going to be a little different to what we've done before. So I have to be on my best behavior for 60 minutes because um, I'm not going to get off camera. Um, okay. I'm going to talk to Hannah about two things that are very dear to her and a very fundamental part of her being. One is art and the other is multiple sclerosis. And um, Hannah has done an amazing job in pulling the two things together. And um, not just for herself, but in how she uh, delivers her art to other people and literally, literally changes their lives. And we know this. Hannah probably wouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it. We've had people whose life has been changed because they've attended Hannah's art classes. So, Hannah, do I have to invite you to start painting well, or are you just going to turn around well, to that camera sorry, and I'm start just, throwing some brush strokes out I'm, there or what? I'm What's absorbing. I'm absorbing all the good things you're saying, <laughs> because yeah. I because you you honestly thank you, Rick. Um, yes. Yeah, so yeah. So okay, let's do this. Why don't I start painting, and then we can get the ball rolling. Does that sound good? <laughs> okay. So all right. Anna's gonna start painting. I, we have no idea what she's gonna paint. Although I will say this that um, if anybody guesses halfway through what this is going to be, then uh, we'll have to come up with some sort of an award. So keep watching. Yeah. Tell us what might be there. Um, I will also tell you that because we've talked about it, we're not going to see a finished piece of art, but I'm hoping that um, when it does get finished, we'll be able to post it along with the show, uh, which usually takes usually takes two or three days so but when the show goes up we'll, we'll see what finishes so Hannah you one thing that that I don't know much about and 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 um you don't really talk a lot about this is your your own family background so what well, what is your family you grew up in San Antonio right Abs yes, I did. Absolutely. So grew up in San Antonio. I've always lived in Texas my whole life, but spent a little time in Dallas, a little time in Georgetown, Texas. Um, yeah. But I, uh, yeah, I grew up uh, in a Hispanic family. Um, I'm part Hispanic, I'm part German as well on my dad's side. Um, so the best of both worlds right there. Um, what I don't. What else is there to say about me? Um, I am very close to my mom. I'm very close to my um, my siblings as well. I have. Yeah. I have to count. I have one, two, three sisters, no brothers. So a household full of girls. So um, yeah, that doesn't mean that oh. what we didn't have our moments. That's for sure. <laughs> so I'm just thinking since I know that cooking is near and dear to your heart and cooking is near and dear to my heart too and we've never really talked much about cooking 
how do you integrate Hispanic cooking with German cooking? I'm thinking about that. Have you have you ever have you ever combined the two? Well, I would have to specify um, yeah. specify that my family on my dad's side is more um, South Texas German, so it's very much um, Americanized. I would say okay. <laughs> so pretty normal, pretty normal. Okay, but so Tex Mex. <laughs> Tex Mex uh-huh. is is more likely what we're going to have you cooking than <laughs> than than G- German Mexican. Is that right? Yes. You know what though? Um, Tex Mex without the cheese or cheese alternatives. That's a whole nother thing. Oh right. That's a whole right. nother because I don't eat cheese. Yeah, I don't eat um, dairy. I should specify. Okay. So That's tell a whole me when uh-huh. when um. So you grew up in San Antonio, and huh? when did you realize, how old were you when you realized that if we put crayons in your hand, you could do something with them? Um, okay, this is a very interesting story, because my mother will tell anybody who will listen that yeah. um, as soon as I was three years old, I not only could color very well, but I knew yeah. all my, I knew the, the, the names of my colors. <laughs> Um, I knew the names of my colors very easily by three years old, apparently. I can't remember it, but she can. So yeah, fun fun little fact. And I've been going ever since. I've just been drawing and painting and just doing anything that makes me happy right. artistically um, since then. And, and it was, it's interesting because I was told at three years old I could name every car on the road. I'm not sure I was very good on my colors, but I said That's I cool. was good on my cars. Um, has your favorite color changed since you were a little kid to now? Um, you know, has it changed? I think it depends on my mood, honestly, because I used to tell everybody rainbow is my favorite color. I love them all. And it was true. It was absolutely true. Um, but now it really depends on my mood. I love mauve. I love like anything mixed with hot pink, honestly. Right. I add right. I do add a lot of pink to my things. I see. <laughs> um, so Rick, are you frozen or am I frozen? I I ah uh, I must have fr- frozen. Sorry, I thought you froze. So uh, let me repeat that. Did you know when you um, were going through middle school and high school that you were going to go to college to study art? Um, I think I did. Yeah, um, art was always just there for me. I, it's just something that I had always gravitated towards. I was never into sports. I was never into cars. I was always um, very quiet, very by myself, um, very often. And I, it was just sort of a no brainer for me to go to school for art. It was just the the next natural step up. And you went to UTSA? Mm -hmm. I did. University of Texas, San Antonio. I spent um, perhaps about yeah, one full one full year at Southwestern University in Georgetown. Um, yeah. Switched to UTSA afterward and graduated from there. And what on um, who would you say were your inspirations as uh, as you grew as an artist? Ooh, honestly. As far as artistic inspirations are concerned, um, when I was younger, actually, honestly, throughout my whole life, I've always, I've always enjoyed the work of Vincent Van Gogh, and yeah. it's just, it's always been um, the vibrancy of the paintings. It's always been um, the way he handled himself, his struggles, the way he put it into, uh, into his artwork. Um, the, his mental health struggles, which I read about later on, um, right. that was all just, you know, very, very moving for me. So, um, yeah, Vincent van Gogh, he's always been a constant in, in my life. 
So I think we have somewhere, if Brianna can find it, a, um, a, a, a picture of Hannah's impression of Vincent's sunflowers. Is that not right? Can we, sh can we show that picture um, as we talk? And you, you're, and you will certainly see, and, and I happen to know that that picture of the sunflowers has been used <laughs> to inspire a lot of other people. Thank yep. you. Thank you so much, Brianna. <laughs> that Why one... do you like those sunflowers? Why do you love Van Gogh's sunflowers? Tell me. Well, honestly, okay, so just a bit of a background for everybody. This is actually um, Anne Can's Summer of Art, um, very first picture. And I wanted to choose something that was very classic and recognizable. Um, However, done by a master, because Vincent van Gogh is always going to be a master painter in my eyes. And so that particular image of the sunflowers is iconic. And I wanted people, this is, this is something that I taught for those who don't understand, who, who don't know what, what this is. Um, I wanted to bring to the table something that uh, was inspired by a master, but that you could recreate um, yourself with markers, cheap markers, any like markers, you can literally buy at any store. Um, because I wanted to show that anybody is uh, can do art, literally, uh, anybody can do art. And so I wanted it, I wanted it to be an accessible piece for people. Does that make sense? Well, we, we are going to um, circle back to anybody yes. can do art, but I want I want to develop a little more of your story. So you you went to college, you went to study art, and before you finished college, you got diagnosed with um, really a, a chronic and life changing illness. Correct? Yes. Uh, well, this and was how, uh, after my after I graduated. Oh, it was after you graduated. Yes. Yes. And how did you get? How did you get diagnosed? Because one of the things I do know um, from having started working with the MS community is that oftentimes it's very hard to get um, to get a firm di diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. You're right. Um, some t for some people it can take um, years. Um, not everybody, of course. Everybody's different. Um, but for myself, it took perhaps. Um, seven months or eight months or so, I haven't quite counted. Um, and that's because my symptoms appeared so very rapidly. Um, they, uh, basically I had a, a, a pet, pet rat passed away and um, I'm an animal lover I'm through and through. Pet rat passed away, I was heartbroken and I felt symptoms um, very, very soon after he passed away. Um, it, it, and they just kept piling on top of each other. Um, and it finally reached to the point where I couldn't just ignore those symptoms um, because I was, I was young, I was 27 and I'd never been sick before in my life. And so I, I ignored everything and I know it's not a good thing to do, but like I said, I was healthy and I didn't know what else to make of, of these symptoms. But once I started getting pain that wouldn't go away, constipation that wouldn't go away, um, and it was bad. It was really bad. Um, uh, what else? The MS hug, just, uh, uh, what is it? Op optic neuritis. Um, I couldn't ignore it anymore. So um, just to explain, then, just uh -huh. to explain to everybody, I know, but just to explain to everybody what that MS hug is. MSs oh, who are yes. watching will know, but t t t t tell us what that MS hug is. Yes. So basically, it's not a nice sounding thing. Hugs are nice. You want hugs. Um, not this thing, though. Um, basically, it feels like um, something is squeezing your rib cage. And in my case, it was squeezing my rib cage, but also some, I felt something heavy right on my chest. And these feelings never went away, ever. Um, and I would have to say that um, I would envision... Uh, aliens space hugger like you know how the, the, the space hug, face hugger on on yeah. your face but i'd say envision it like around my my waist yeah. um 
so yeah in a nutshell that's what it is and it it was pretty bad for me <laughs> it was pretty bad and and when you finished at, at college and you just gotten diagnosed what were you doing at that point with your art were you working as an artist were you were you trying to find work as an artist or were you doing something other than art um so after college, um, I actually went, I spiraled into a depression. This is not something I talk about openly very often. Um, and I didn't, I didn't recognize it as depression because like I said, I was, I was young. I didn't, I don't know what's going on. Um, I, so I, anyway, I just spiraled into a depression and for years. So actually for years during that time after I graduated, um, I didn't do art, you know, I, although I, although I will have to say I did teach art. Um, this, this was my first foray into teaching art. Um, but I never, I, n I really didn't make art for myself. I did on a few occasions, but those were, um, pretty far between. And where were you teach? Were you teaching at a school? Were you, were you teaching virtually at that point or where, where were you teaching? It was at those uh, paint and sip classes. Um, like you go there and you bring your drink and you bring your friends and you paint a specific um, painting that the instructor will instructor will teach to everybody. So that was okay. me. And I actually, I actually loved my job. That was a great job. Wow, wow. And but but you do you think it was the MS that pushed you into this? into this depressive state or was it something could it have been something other than that or was it a combination of things i i really think it was a combination of things because honestly um my my um symptoms history um did in fact begin while i was in school um but i didn't recognize that i didn't recognize that but it manifested in the form of um migraines um, but also, funny story, I got um, glasses that I wore for the first time and only time I've ever worn glasses was uh, during this time. And thinking back on it now, I think that optic neuritis was very sneakily trying to make its way into my life. And I just thought I needed glasses. But the glasses didn't always work. It was so weird. Um Glasses didn't always work, so sometimes I would use them, sometimes I didn't use them. Um, so yeah, that was MS trying to sneak its way into my life in the form of glasses. So it it manifested itself pretty uh, um, in, in intervals at that time. Mm -hmm. But um, going back to the question about depression, um, if I can remember that, okay. I have MS. I have terrible, terrible memories. So what was your question again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're asking me. Now I've got to remember oh, my no. question. Get out of here. Come on. Oh, no. Um, no, I, 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 I really, well, where I was going with this was um, I wanted to really delve not so much into the depression but I think because I want to come back to the depression a little later because I want to talk to you about mental health but I'm really interested to know how your art was before you got diagnosed with MS and if MS changed the way you did your art. Mm. Okay so now we're getting into a great question. Um, my MS absolutely changed my art. So let me give you a little bit of a backstory. Um, when I was in school, in art school, um, my art was pretty boring. <laughs> like I, I could, I, I, I really strived to um, create artwork that was a little bit more realistic because uh, that's what I had been doing my whole life. But um, I, you just, you, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't even that good at being realistic. You know, I was, I was okay. Um, if you're talking about, you know, people who can draw realistically, but I, I wasn't too great and it very much lacked soul. <laughs> I didn't have any soul in my artwork. I was really searching for things that weren't there and it just didn't make sense as a form of artwork. So, um, so 
whenever I was going through the, the motions of MS, um, I really couldn't, I couldn't do art for the longest time. And I just couldn't figure out what was going on with me. Couldn't really figure out um, who I was as a person. And I can go into that in more detail if you want to. But um, basically, I went from being very, very, um, I guess, tight with my rendering and my drawing and more and realistic to much more open and free and very free form. And um, I do I do strive to be a little more like Van Gogh and Monet. I, I try. <laughs> I try. So a lot more scribbly, actually. It's a lot more scribbly. It's a lot more playful and fun and free. And I love it. Like, I love my style now. So that's that's it in a nutshell. We can go dive deeper if you'd like. Well, I, I'd like to I'd like to pull up um Brianna number four um the the art piece number four which is um artwork that I I think Hannah has really done for herself and, and I'd love you to talk about number four Hannah in terms of how that expresses how the MS changed you and, wh and what it brought out of you other than Absolutely. the pink and the fuchsia in the middle, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, that's my favorite part. Um, but anyway, um, okay, so this is um, created with something called alcohol inks. And alcohol inks, I discovered much later on in life after diagnosis that they are such an amazing um, way to um, sort of reorient your brain and really focus on the moment. So I, I will often use alcohol inks um, when I'm feeling particularly like my brain just cannot handle organization. It, I have a lot of cog fog. I really cannot um, pay attention to things, remember things at all. My memory loss is horrible. Um, so alcohol inks and honestly anything that is very much water-based I have found um, will sort of bring you back to square one, but in, and, and I'm, I'm describing what I think is happening. I don't actually know neurologically what's actually happening, but, um, <laughs> but anyway, um, the, the colors spread, um, the alcohol ink, it flows and it just looks very gorgeous. You can, you can control it in some ways, but in other ways you cannot control it. Um, so the idea is to take a look at the colors that are mixing and mingling and creating all of these, these puddles, if you will, all those, these little sections and be in the moment with those, those things that are happening. Cause sometimes you can control it, um, if you practice it, but you can't always control it. And I feel right. like very often with MS, you can't control it. You just can't with your thoughts that especially those thoughts that keep on going and going and going, um, you cannot control it. And so it's, that's, I don't know, I guess just looking at the similarities between my emotional state and, and the medium really helped to put things into perspective. And it really helped to, um, uh, I guess, get my bearings down, so to speak. Um, not only in the beginning when I was first going through all that heartbreak and all that grief with MS, but um, but even now when I need a little pick me up, you just bring out some mm -hmm. alcohol inks and just watch the colors, and it just it lifts me up. It really does. does that yeah, I have, I have a a good friend very, since birth really who um, who silk screens using alcohol inks and um, um, her. She makes um, fabrics, and uh, it's just gorgeous. I'll have to. I'll share. Yeah. I'll share her website with you. But yeah, um, you. So you stop painting. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't stop teaching painting, but you stopped painting for yourself. What? What um, was the catalyst that got you to start painting for yourself again? Um, How did that question. happen? How did I start painting? Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest with you. It's an ongoing issue with me because um, I will get so caught up in uh, in painting 
or I'm sorry, not painting, but creating artwork for other people that I do forget about myself, like teaching, teaching artworks, for example. Um, so I do still forget about myself often. Um, and it's something that I am very much still working on. Um, cause often, cause it, it does also depend on, um, on my MS as well, or basically if it's not my MS, then at least just how I am feeling. Um, yeah. Where was I going with this? Where was I going with this? I'll get back to it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in and I'll, I'll rescue you because, um, a couple of things for the audience. We're, we're coming close to halfway through already and wow. we still got so much to cover. Um, yep. We've got a lot of canvas to cover as well there, Miss Hannah. Um, I know. But um, first of all, if you have any questions for Hannah, please put them in the chat, We're in the uh, questions and answers. And secondly, we've posted Hannah's website um, in the chat. And I'd encourage you all to go look at some of her ceramics and her acrylic, uh, her paintings on acrylic, which I want to talk about. Um, it's just so, some of the work is just is beautiful and and inspirational, and I, I would be proud to have to have it hanging in my home. Um, you you started working with acrylics and mm -hmm. um, uh, not acrylic paints, but painting on acrylic. Mm -hmm. How did yes, that? Did. How on earth? How did that come about? What what what? In Is it me that's frozen? Uh-oh. Is it me that's frozen? Uh-oh. What's going on? It's not. Rick? Rick? Did you... There you are. You froze I'm again. Oh, you're sorry. Good. I, yeah, I'm, you know, I live in a very rural area and there's a storm going through and, and it's ah. and we're a little bit unstable here. But um, what I was saying is, how did you come, how did you get to, to paint on acrylics? And, and as we talk about the acrylics, Brianna, can you show, um, I think, number seven and number eight, and number nine, some of those, um, some of the pictures that, that Hannah's created on acrylics. But talk to us about how you came to work on acrylics. Well, that was actually a method that I started off in uh, in college when I was. Um, oh, that's Brianna. That's actually a window painting. We'll We're going to that get part. to those. We'll, we'll get, get to, to the window paintings. There, <laughs> there we, go. we go. There we go. That's one of the um, paintings that I've mm -hmm. done on top of acrylic. Yes, that's it. Um, so I. I had so much fun um, experimenting with this idea. Um, I came across a Chinese artist, and um, I will have to—I will have to look up his name. I don't remember what his name is, but I was just so enamored by his 3D paintings. He created um, uh, 3D glass paintings, and so I was loving the idea of painting um, a. 3D paintings, I suppose. Um, but of course, back then, being a student, I could not afford um, <laughs> huge pieces of glass or even huge pieces of plexiglass. So I settled for one and um, mm -hmm. I fell in love with the reverse painting process. Um, I basically had to think about these paintings as puzzles. Um, they became something different um, on the outside, on the on the the back side, where where I had to paint them. Uh, but when you turn it over, they look completely different. So um, that wow. one is, oh, that Ooh. one's not. That one's on a canvas. It's not on a plexiglass piece. Right. There's one more on a plexiglass piece. Yes. Keep going. Yeah, believe, keep going. I believe Brianna. it's the last one. It's the last number nine, I think it is. I sent her Try. a million. I sent in a the million. Next one, pictures. the next one, if you've got it. No, oh, we don't have it. That's okay. Oh, okay. I, I've that got it right. here. But it's you, on you, my you, website. And so you, you started to this this reverse this reverse um, image. So you painted it on one side and then you turned it over and, and you saw it in reverse. And, and that 
inspired you? Um, well, the the Chinese artist um, inspired me. Um, that particular style of painting was my very first foray into this world of abstract painting. Mm -hmm. um, I had suddenly begun to walk away from this idea that all of my brushstrokes needed to be perfect and they needed to be um, uh, exactly uh, reaching that goal of, of having a realistic looking painting. Suddenly I was thinking in a different way now. And um, I, it's, they're difficult to create those paintings, which is the only reason I don't create them right now since I need a lot of space for them. But um, they really opened the door into um, thinking differently about my art in general. So when you say you need a lot of space for them, you mean a lot of mental space for them? That too. I, mean, I, I meant physical space, but yes, oh, absolutely busy. that too. Oh, Absolutely, but you, they're huge. <laughs> oh, they're huge. So give us yes, an idea they're... how big how big are they? Because we see a photograph, we don't really know what what yeah. that means. Um, well, normally they're maybe four foot by four foot, or like maybe two uh -huh. foot, by, maybe, about, maybe a little bit bigger than this canvas right here. Um, although I have created smaller ones, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, somebody in the audience would like to know how long it takes you to, to complete a, um, a plexiglass painting, one of those Ooh. big paintings. I would say maybe about a month because I, I need to go wow. back and forth and um, literally lift it up, um, paint, on, on, on one, paint on the top, lift it up to look at it to see what it looks like. Um, and then put it back down and let the layer dry. So oh, right, um, it's a, right, it's right, a right. I can see so, that too. Yeah, another reason I don't uh, do those anymore. So, um, I, I want to segue into some of the teaching that you've done more recently, and and tell us a little bit about. Um, Heart Needs Art, which is, a, I think, a, a San Antonio nonprofit, and some of the work you've been doing, and, and then we can look at some of the art that you've done in, in for Heart Needs Art. Yes. Um, so Hearts Need Art was, um, I started working for them in 2019, and I, they basically brought me on to work with, um, with patients um, in a group setting because this was before COVID, of course. Um, yeah. and so I learned so much, um, about teaching to, um, people who are going through illnesses because they specialize primarily in oncology units in hospitals. And so, um, through my work with them, I, uh, I mean, I, I already knew how, how to teach painting, but I really needed to, uh, be able to learn how to listen, but really listen and really empathize with people. And um, they basically gave me the opportunity to really um, listen to people and absorb their stories. And I'm talking like um, really understand um, how somebody can come to live um, live with a disease like cancer. And um, Basically, I, I I will never ever do another job like that again. And Rick is gone. <laughs> no, I'm here. I'm listening to you. Oh, there you I'm are. listening to you. Yeah, no, I I my my bandwidth isn't great, and oh, you're good. people would much rather look at you than look at me. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Well. Um. Does that answer your some your some of your question? Yeah. So so you came to her with art and tell us a little bit about what you do and how you work with these patients when you when you go into um is is it the the hospital at, um at utsa that you that you work the 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 university of texas hospital there in, in san antonio that you work at yeah um well we're expanding and um uh, mostly um methodist hospital here, there Okay. Um, but also University Hospital too. Um, okay. It's at Methodist Hospital that um, 
that I am able to create window paintings for people. And that's like my favorite thing to do ever. I mean, of course, making art is great too, but when I can create a huge mural for paintings on their wall during, uh, or a huge mural for patients on their wall right. while they're staying there, that's even better. Um, so, Miss Hannah, just tell us about these window paintings. Yes. There's no, because who understands what window paintings are? Tell us and then we'll look at one. You explain yes. it first and then we'll look at one. Basically, a mural that is washable that I can create for patients on on their their bedroom window. And they're huge. Like these windows, like... I want to say maybe they're seven, eight feet tall or so. And I don't always go all the way to the ceiling, but they're um, basically I'll go into a room, introduce myself and um, basically get a feel for, for what they might want. So they might want um, bedside art with me or they might want a window painting. And I would say nine, time, nine times out of the 10, people choose to have a huge mural on, in their bedroom. So I'll go in there and give them um, some ideas and we'll discuss what kinds of things that they, they want on their painting. Um, uh, I'm sorry, want on their window. Window. And um, yeah, and uh, then I'll go from there. I will literally um, bring my, I'll, I'll pour out my paintings in, in the cart outside because we can't bring our things inside the room, but bring all my supplies inside and get to get to work painting. Um, so so let, Brianna, let, let's take a look. Yeah. I was gonna say number seven, Bri yes. There yes. you go. Yes. This one in particular, um, I had gotten to know the patient um, for a while. And um, I, I, I learned that this patient really loved uh, nature. She loved being being outdoors um, at, at her, her, her ranch. And um, so I just decided, you know what, I'm going to create a tree for her. And um, I hadn't really talked to this patient um, too, too much previously. I mean, this was in the outpatient setting that I'd met her. So finally, when I met her in her, in her, uh, her room at, at the hospital on the inpatient setting, um, I got to know her. Um, she was, she had previously been very shy, um, but I found that while I was creating the artwork for her, um, she was able to basically tear those walls down. Um, she was able to um, open up to me about her life and who she is as a person. And I really got to know her in those sessions. And those sessions are, are so precious to me because had I not been in her room, I don't think that I would have had the conversations that I'd had with her. Um, she was such a kind, a kind woman. Um, yeah. And going back to that though, going back to that idea that, that art breaks down walls, that's an idea that I think about often because it doesn't matter which, uh, which patient's room I'm in. Um, I will always be able to strike up a conversation and sometimes, well, not, not always sometimes, very often that conversation will turn into um, stories about their life and stories about them as people. And they just, it, it just seems like they're able to connect with me on another level that they wouldn't be able to otherwise connect with me on. So I'll spend an hour and a half or so, sometimes two hours with them, and we'll just chat about whatever they want to chat about. It's it's very sweet, and it's it's such an endearing time for me. Uh, this one right here. Here's another one. Yes. Is there a backstory to this one? Yes. So this one, um, uh, the patient, um, he he had no idea what he could ask of me, this person. Um, he didn't know anything about art. And so he mentioned that he he also loves to be outdoors. And so I just, you know, threw it out to him. Well, why don't I just paint um, Enchanted Rock, which is a, a famous uh, state, state park here in South Texas. So I painted Enchanted Rock for him. Basically, Enchanted Rock is um, the setting where there are three huge um, granite domes. They're massive 
and you can go and you can walk and hike all on top of these uh, massive domes. And so I actually didn't have very good Wi-Fi signal during my session, so I couldn't actually look up pictures of Enchanted Rock, but I'm proud to say I painted that from memory because I've been there so many times ah. myself. And <laughs> turns out ah. this, uh, <laughs> this person, um, he loved it. He loved it. And he even requested a butterfly um, to be painted for um, in memory of a, a family member of his who loved butterflies. Um, wow. Yeah. No, I was wondering. I was wondering how that butterfly snuck, snuck in. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And, and actually, there's a great question that has been asked, which um, is, is a very good hook for me to pivot on here. And um, the question is, um, how do you deal with um, with artist block? Because because you mentioned before, you you can stop painting for a while and then you start again. So mm -hmm. do you have techniques? Because there are artists watching who suffer with artist block. Do you have techniques to to deal with artist block? Yes. So um, remember how remember we I, I talked about alcohol inks yes. and the idea that you can um, basically um, just watch the colors um, flowing onto the paper. Um, well, I found that anything that is water based, so it doesn't have to be alcohol inks. It can be um, what is it watercolors? It can even be watercolor pencils. Um, I find that if I'm able to take a look at what the water does and how it carries the pigment across the paper, um, I'm able to basically become, or basically be in the moment. Um, it's almost like meditation. If, if uh, yeah, I feel like it's almost like meditation because yeah. I'm able to um, uh, be in the present moment with these art pieces. Um, I don't have to think about exactly what I'm going to create. I'm going to let the water do the work for me. Um, it's going to do the work for me. And all I'm here to do is guide it a little bit, but mostly I'm going to be watching it. And so from there, um, I will allow my thoughts to flow. My thoughts um, almost become one with the, the water. Yeah, with the what pigment, you're painting. With the, yeah. It, it'll almost become one with uh, with what's on the paper. Um, I'll often create stories in my head. I'll often, um, I don't know. It's just sometimes they're not even stories. Sometimes they're just my thoughts, especially if I'm in a depressed mood. Um, they're just the thoughts that pop into my head. And I will never try to stop thinking about these things because this is my present moment this is my mind as as it is right now um i shouldn't be ashamed of my mind right now i should just let it go right. and let it pass um so that's one way to sort of try and curb writers writer's block artist block artist block. um yes at least for me now do we have time for me to talk about uh how that idea has helped me with my ms Sure, of you course, okay. we'd love to. Yeah, because I I feel like it's important to um, hold on to that idea of doing things that make you happy, um, and met, not only meditating with those the, those things that make you happy by doing them, but um, letting giving your mind space to to just be, giving your mind space to just think what it's going to think because you can't control your emotions. You also can't really control your situation when it comes to MS. Um, it's just going to happen. And when I was first um, diagnosed with MS, um, I had to be able to, um, I guess, sort of put my situation, situation into perspective. Um, I had to make MS fit into my life. But that doesn't always mean um, accepting things for what they are either. Um, basically, I would, um, I had to grieve. 
And I had to grieve who I was before MS. Mm -hmm. That was the only way I was ever going to get, get over it or at least, or at least get through um, my sadness. And so being able to watch the colors on the canvas um, while I was doing water-based things like a watercolor, watercolor pencils, um, really helped me to put things into perspective when it came to MS. I was able to, um, in focusing on the mediums and what the mediums do on the paper, um, I was able to think about myself and think about my place in life. Um, really trying to figure out how to best uh, how to best describe this and I maybe I should go back a little bit um, sometimes when I was um, trying to make the trek uh, trying to make the trek to my um, my my personal studio space um, it was really difficult because that space my studio space was really far um, back um, we lived in a wooden, wooded area at the time, and so being very, very uh, heat sensitive, I had to walk what felt like a mile uh, in the sun in order to get to it. So it would just drain me of energy. And I was there to mm -hmm. paint, and I was there to do something artsy. Um, so I'd have to, I'd have to, to just, I'd, I'd basically sit there. I'd basically just sit there and um, lament on on my situation, and it was not a fun time. <laughs> I would stare at my materials and just think, like, what am I doing with myself? That was this was all part of my identity crisis. I would just think, what am I doing with myself? I'm just staring at these materials. I have nothing to to offer because I'm a new person. I don't even know how to how to walk correctly. I don't know how to see correctly. What's mm -hmm. going on? Mm -hmm. Am I ever going to be a, a, a normal person? And the fact of the matter is I needed to process all of that grief. And having my hand doing something um, while my mind was processing everything, um, there's something there. It helped me to um, focus my life, focus my attention wow. on what was important. And I can't, I can't explain what and actually with this, happened. Were you using um, alcohol-based paints at the time when you were doing this or not? <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> yes, but very yeah. often it was um, watercolors and watercolor pencils. Um, yeah. although, there were, although alcohol inks did play, did play a part. Um, but the, but I, I really wanted to scribble actually using the, the watercolor pencils, because, um, if you scribble with watercolor pencils, they just, um, after you put the water on top of it, the, the colors and like everything just melts together afterwards. So it's so satisfying to see that, um, uh, to, to see, see that transformation. Yeah. So one of the things that, that, um, that I want to pivot into is this um, this whole depression anxiety axis, um, which you're familiar with, which I'm um, certainly on the depression side familiar with, um, and it just seems that when you teach your virtual art classes, you you're able to dispel this this this, this this depression and anxiety for the people that are participating, um, certainly for the time that they are working with you and, and maybe even longer. Um, have you thought about that as, I mean, you're not so much an art therapist, you're, 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 you're maybe a mental therapist, you're maybe a, you know, a psychological therapist as well <laughs> here, mental therapist. Well, I've really been able to, um, I, I've really put a lot of thought into uh, the types of brushstrokes that helped me to, um, oh, I say brushstrokes, but uh, the types of materials, the types of um, mark making, the types of repetition, 
um, all of these elements of, of a piece of artwork, what is it about those elements that have helped me personally? And I try to incorporate that into, um, into all of my art pieces. And whether or not it's actually working, I have no idea, but I guess it is. <laughs> um, but I, I, I really try to think about the, the elements that are, that are, that exist, um, I'm sorry, not the elements, about the properties of each and every art form, um, each and every art um, supply that we use. Um, take, for example, markers, okay? If we're looking back at that very first um, picture of the Van Gogh sunflowers, um, there are lots of scribbles in that picture. Um, okay. And it really just, it, it ends up becoming um, the becoming part of the entire picture. But if you think about scribbles, you're, you're thinking back to childhood. You're thinking back to um, uh, a time uh, yeah. when for yeah. some, some people, not all people, but some people, it was a little bit easier to exist in the world. And so I think about that idea and... Uh -huh. um, I hope it helps people. I think it so, helps people. It helps me. My producer is getting very nervous that we're not going to talk about what you're painting here. One thing I've noticed is we started off with that with that sort of fawny, tanny brown, and now that's mm -hmm. disappeared. I'm not really sure why it was there, but there's got to be a reason. Talk to us about what you're painting, please. Yes. <laughs> So, um, in doing so, um, I, I might have to talk about the last painting I did, which um, you guys have a picture of. Um, it's picture number five. Number five. Um, yes, number that's five. A, reference, a reference photo, but it's not the same, okay? okay. Um, <laughs> basically, it's a mountainscape that I'm painting. Yes. This is also a mountainscape. Um, and honestly, the, the reason you saw that uh, brown underneath at first is because that's a, a very classic painting technique um, in which you put in a, a base coat underneath every all the color you have um, to make the, the colors a little bit richer. Yeah. So anyway, um, I chose to do a mountainous setting and very specifically, um, my memory of uh, pictures of Chile. <laughs> because I have always wanted to visit Chile, the mountains in the, that country. Yeah. And um, that picture you just saw, that's actually a picture of my memories of West Texas. So travel has always been a constant want and need in my life. And so I decided to paint this today because it represents my, my traveler dreams, I guess. Um, as people with multiple sclerosis, um, we might often feel like our dreams and our goals are not attainable anymore. Because, you know, as, as anybody with a chronic illness will know, um, it changes you. This, this diagnosis changes you as a person. It, it changes the way you exist in the world. Um, and so it's important to not... Um, not let go of the things that you love to do. And in my case, I love to travel. So uh, that these pictures are all from memory. Um, and in my case, memory of pictures of Chile, because um, we might often feel like we are enclosed or, or encased in our, right. in our environment. So you we can't, take yourself out. Yeah. 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 And so, we can't go anywhere. Um, I've, one uh, one topic I didn't want I did want to talk about, but I didn't get time to, and I just want to acknowledge is that you know there's a similarity between mental health and MS in them both being invisible illnesses, mm -hmm. and um, I know that that's such a sensitive topic topic for our MS folks, and um, you just you you cannot see it, but I have a question I've got to ask before we we finish up and we just have a couple of minutes now and that is can anyone paint can anyone I mean, we, like, like anyone well everybody says oh i don't know how to paint i'm not attending ah. that class i'm not a i don't know how to paint 
And you know, you've heard me say you haven't attended Miss Hannah's art class because <laughs> anyone can paint. So I want to know what you, that's what I say. But what do you say about I, can anyone <laughs> paint? <laughs> anyone can paint, but anyone can also do artwork as well. I have to, um, I guess, emphasize uh that sometimes we just want that encouragement sometimes we need that encouragement and that's exactly what i am here to do like i i really seriously feel like like anybody really can do artwork whether or not that's painting um it's you have to try something new if you've never done it before but it is absolutely possible um for anybody to give it a try um stick their toe or what's, what's that phrase um yeah stick their toe in the water yeah stick their toe in the water dip their yeah. toes in the water um of something new and that's the idea test the water see if it's something that you even like doing at all um and uh yeah anybody can create this uh a vincent van gogh recreation if they want sunflower well if <laughs> yes. anybody I just want to say, and I don't know if we have a link for this, if, John, if John's got it, but on October 20th, Hannah's going to be teaching another class with Ancan. Um, unfortunately, we won't be sending materials. It's going to be a BYOAM class, bring your own yes. art materials, yes. right? Um, yep. But if, you, if you'd like to try it, reach out to us. Um, you can reach out to Alexa at ancan.org we can put that in the chat window and or to hannah at ancan.org um and we'll tell you how to join that class that's going to be unlimited and you can just you can for yourself experience some of this immense pleasure that 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 hannah um communicates and and brings out from her participants and hannah it's been a pleasure talking to you i've had such fun Somebody thought you were painting two ice cream cones with chocolate on top, but I told them. I see, the, I, I can see it. You see that? But that, that, that wasn't what it is. Um, we, um, you know, we're, we're so grateful. We're so grateful to have you in our Ancam world and, and so grateful that we've done this with you today. Um, folks, next month we have Kelly Jolly. I got it right, Kelly Jolly, who um, has played the ukulele frequently at uh, Dollywood and uh, is a jazz singer and um, a storyteller and has lived with heart disease and colon disease and, um, and, and, and GYN issues. And so we'll be talking to her. She won't be painting, but she will be playing her ukulele. And please, again, don't forget the tip jar. And Miss Hannah Garrison, thank you so much.